Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burns. Time for the Thursday afternoon, just before Friday, Monday morning podcast. And I'm just checking in on you. Seeing how your week's going as you're slogging your way through your cubicle life. Something you never wanted. You know, but who are you going to blame? Huh? Are you going to blame society like all of these people on social networks? Is it ever their fault? Um, anyways, I have a special guest. As promised on the Monday morning podcast, I said, God damn it, and I delivered. We have the amazing, the unbelievably talented and hilarious Bill Hader, star of the new incredible show on HBO, Barry, starring Henry Winkler, Stephen Root. Ah, where's my cheat sheet? Where's, who's the woman who plays your girlfriend? She crushes oh, it. Oh, Sarah Goldberg. Oh, my God. She's amazing. Yeah, she's phenomenal. She's amazing. She's amazing. And uh, it's eight incredible episodes. Thank you. I saw the first two. And then my link expired, and then I couldn't get it to play. I got a new link, and then I melted down, and my wife said, you're bringing tension into the house. So that was, that's was that been my experience so far. But having said that, I absolutely loved, loved the first two that I saw. And there's another uh, the other actor there with the alopecia there, uh, Anthony. Oh, yeah, Anthony Kerrigan. Oh, my God, NoHo Hank. Mm-hmm. Great name. Incredible actor. So, um I was actually, just to give people a background, I was going to interview all of you guys at the now defunct Nerd Melt. Yeah, that's going Because there. of that incident, I believe. Yeah, that, because of what happened to me. Yeah, yeah. so you, you, you were supposed to come down there with Henry Steven and uh, the other guys, and uh, you have a peanut allergy. I have some... a nut allergy, and they, okay. gave, they gave me, well, I, here's the thing. It's my own, I, I blame myself. So I can have almonds. I'm okay with almonds, but all oh, okay. the nuts I'm bad with. So I go, oh, I have coffee, and I go, oh, can I have almond milk in it? And so it's almost like you're milk. like a racist, but with just like nuts, right? Just nuts. <laughs> those, those are the. <laughs> you stay with your own. You stay with the almonds. All these other ones, get them out of my house. All right. I get yeah. it. You're you're a, a yeah. peanut supremacist. I've never heard of that. I thought if you had like a peanut allergy, no, that, was, like, that it. was it. No, I I found that out on a movie. I had something. And, Whoa, that has almonds in it, and I had it, and I go, I'm fine. And then I. Went home and I had an EpiPen and sat there with almonds and ate it and nothing What is happened. an EpiPen? That's what you take in case you have a- You're, you're doing a stabbing shock. motion into you your do, leg. Yeah, I do a stabbing motion into your leg. Yeah, I stab, you stab yourself with the EpiPen. So, and it takes what? Like your blood pressure? It takes it, like, no, it just it shoots you full of adrenaline basically and then you just, you're just you able to breathe. It gets a big shot of the- so, so when you drank this, so you were supposed to come in and all of a sudden somebody basically gave, gave the you, equivalent to you of a cup poison. of poison. They gave me, well, almond milk, but it was this fancy coffee place. And they were like, well, we have an almond the cashew blend that comes in. I can't have cashews. Oh. So I had that and I took a drink of it backstage, excited about to go on. And I went, I got to go. Like and, how uh, quick, when you drink that, how quick do you know? Is it like getting bit oh, by a like, cobra? Yeah, yeah. Like you just <laughs> exactly. know. <laughs> You're like, all right, that wasn't good. I need the antidote. Yeah, you don't get you don't get bit by a cobra and go. I'm gonna wait. I can do this. Twenty podcast. minutes. I can do the podcast. Yeah. I'm fine. <laughs> my legs all black and blue, and I can't really feel my feet anymore. And yeah, but I'm fine. It was just one fang. Yeah, I'm fine. And my dad, the the biggest bomber was my dad is a giant fan here, so my dad was really excited to, and he flew in because we had the premiere, and so he wanted to see it. And I go, I gotta go. And he was like, What? Oh no! And did, he's like, You're he fine. Up? He goes, You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> Shake it off. And I go, no, no, no. And he's like, you're fine. You're fine. I go, what? I want to see Bill Burr. And I'm like, well, I got to go. I got to go. You can stay here. Go. And he's like, I'll go. You, you know, let's get you some Benadryl and all that stuff. Okay. So so what happens? Is your, your throat closes up? Yeah. And so a guy, someone ran out and got me Benadryl and that, that was fine. And then I got home. Did but the how, how, how bad is, like, how much are you laboring breathing? I mean, you like Oh, leaning? I'm breathing fine. It's just, I, 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 it was in my mouth for only a couple of seconds and then I spit it out but it was enough to make everything start to kind of it was like hives inside your mouth and in your throat oh my god oh yeah that's disgusting yeah it was awful so and then so, when you take the Benadryl how long does it, it take it chills that out and then you get groggy and then I did the EpiPen which then makes you all jacked up and then I went and did the premiere and yeah it sucked oh so you were able to work then that night yeah I had to yeah it was like HBO was like we need you. Here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you travel? When you travel, do you have those things with you? Mm-hmm. I have my backpack out right there. Yeah, and that's the whole reason. Could I, I buy one of those? Yeah, you can go. You yeah, can you just get a buy prescri- a. We gotta get prescription. Oh, okay. You gotta get a prescription for it. Yeah. 
Because I was going to do that yeah. for like the writer's room on F is for Family. <laughs> you know, when you just get like burned out, like I can't think of any more funny I'll shit. I'll do an EpiPen. And then just stab yourself. Yeah. yeah, let's just do EpiPens. Yeah. Well, no, it's like this dumb thing though. when you do it. Everyone thinks it's, but it's 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 just more the motion of it looks more severe than it actually is. It's just like a little pin prick, but it's like buried into this. Do you go through fringe. your pants? No, you kind of pull your okay. pants down and go right on your leg, and then. But uh, so you stab it, and then you you push the you thing push down. the thing down at the same time. Yeah, you can't tell me you don't feel a little bit like John Rambo when you do. Yeah, that. no, you totally do. Yeah, like you're stitching yourself up. <laughs> That's awesome. But, that's, but I'm such a wimp that I'm, you know. Oh God, well, I know. want you to know you not being there really threw me off my game because I've, I've never hosted one of those before. So it was an <laughs> honor that I got to do it. And one of my goals was like, I was just like, I am not asking Henry Winkler about playing Arthur Fonzarelli. Right. I am, that was, I am going to, if I'm going to do anything, I'm going to talk about night shift. <laughs> I left you with nothing. Which, yeah. And then by the end, I was just like, they were helping me through the interview, <laughs> and then somehow I just said, I go, you know, I'm running out of stuff, but my goal is is I'm not bringing up you-know-who. And then he just broke into the character just saying, like, you know, that character made me a lot of money and put my kid through college. I can't do the fonts. But I was, and I was, then I was all excited, like, oh, my God, he did the fonts. Oh, when he does it, you, it's like, the, it's like uh, you know, Mickey Mouse showing. Uh, John Mulaney said it's like Mickey Mouse showing up or something. It's like a thing I grew up. I'm like, oh, that's television. Is that That's character. incredible. And he'll he said it to Alec Berg and I once and Alec co created Barry, he's not a, a very effusive guy and he was standing behind me and Henry told this story where Does he that had mean to not do... emotional? Yeah, he's, okay. he's, he's I'm not Swedish. smart neither of my listeners. Swedish. <laughs> <laughs> he's Swedish, you know. Okay. He's like, huh. You oh know? yeah. <laughs> I've done stand up I've done stand up through the whole uh that whole region up there. Finland was the funniest one. Why? They were just sitting there, they were trying to solve the problem of the joke. <laughs> like I would sit there and I'm doing the joke and it was just quiet and quiet and quiet and then if somebody just finally goes why didn't you just blah, 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 blah? And I was just like, is that what you fucking guys are doing? I go, you don't need to solve these. This isn't like a self-help thing. This is just Why absurd. don't you just kick your wife out of the house? Yes. <laughs> Bury her in the backyard and say she went to her mother's. Why like, don't you do that? Yeah. So it, <laughs> that no, was Finland, though. But I definitely noticed there was a, a huge difference. Was it the Baltic Sea? Yeah, I don't know. Like Norway and, and uh, Sweden mm -hmm. is a certain level of yeah. emotionally disconnected. <laughs> and then when you go to the over there where they're spooning with Russia and they actually defeated Russia and had to give up part of their land yeah. because they paired up with Hitler. I mean, yeah, that was a, yeah. you know, yeah. you know, they had a, they went between the two craziest people and they, last century. It's like who and they we, went to the crazier one which and who lost. Yeah. Don't ever go to the I don't know if one. they went to the crazier one. They they, they were they, to, they were equals. They yeah, were peers. Yeah, yeah, they were <laughs> Like, if there was a way that they both could have won the war and lived. Yeah. You know, I guess the other guy lived, right? Style of live. I don't know shit about history. Like, they could sit back like, you know, yeah, old we NBA fine. players. Yeah, exactly. Like, when Wilt and Bill Russell get together, they could be talking about murdering people. Yeah, and their knees are bad. They yeah. can't really walk around much. <laughs> they're exaggerating their yeah, stats. Just yeah, they're just, yeah. yeah. But, no, they, yeah, it was this, yeah, no, Alec is, a, he's hilarious. I mean, he wrote on Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm. He's, he's a very funny guy, but he's not, he's very kind of quiet. And and uh, Henry did the Fonz. He just told a story, and I said, oh, I had to tell all these people, you know. Because Henry in life is very kind of, hello, how are you? Oh, oh that's what makes nice. it, when you meet yeah. him or you see him just talking, that's what makes it even more incredible. It's yeah. like that guy came out of this guy. Yeah, he's like, I was on the phone in my car, hands-free, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> being safe, <laughs> being safe. And then, you know, and then he'll be like, oh, you know, the Fonz would say, hey, part like the Red Sea. You know, he would do something. And Alec was behind me and he went, oh, my God. <laughs> it was the most. Yeah. He just went, I can't, I can't believe. What I, he, he, it was the most effusive I've ever seen Alec. He just went, oh, I can't believe that. It gave us chills, you know. Well, because it, it, it like, like you said, when you talk to the guy, it's nowhere it's like Mel Blanc. When Mel Blanc would do yeah. voices, like he, you'd be like, "This, there's no way this guy does Bugs Bunny or he does You Send Me Sam. Like yeah. You couldn't hear him in any no. of it. And I feel like with him, when he's just talking, you, it's just like, this can't be the guy that played that guy. And all of a sudden he does the voice. This is yes, hilarious. Go. Now I'm going to sit here talking about him being the fonts for this whole fucking interview. <laughs>
Well, but mean, I'm sorry just... I left you with nothing, though, because I left and then you were stuck with that. It sounds to like... me. It sounds to me like you blew off the interview. And I'm not buying this whole fucking stabbing yourself. Then somehow all you right, made, fine, you made right, the fine. premiere. It was I, a premiere. There was supermodels the there. No, there was no fucking You weren't going to the fucking I, nerd I, melt to talk on some <laughs> jackasses podcast. I get it. There was no supermodels at an HBO premiere for Barry. No, it was all a like casting. How about some Hooters chicks? They weren't yeah, down there. Yeah, well, they were working there. No, no, but I they they had me. Um, no, I, there was a thing where it was one of those things where you leave and then HBO is going, oh my god, oh my god, we, you know the thing is it's his show. You gotta, you know, you gotta be. What well, what do we gotta? Can we send a doctor over there? Can we do anything? What can we do? And <laughs> they're going old school, sending hookers and eight yeah, balls. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like this is Doctor Feel Good, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my magic briefcase. All right. You're going to be up in no time, buddy. Well, everybody I know that has been watching it has just been like, you know what I love about it and what I wanted to talk to you about is I love when somebody that's known for doing comedy gets to do some drama stuff because for some reason they, they think that, uh, I don't know who the comedian was that screwed it up for the rest of us. <laughs> I want to know who that person was and also who the person was that fucked up so bad that we all actors now have to get there like nine hours before you're going to get called. <laughs> if you sit there with the fake mustache glued on your face. It's just like, who the fucked up? Wait, who yeah. fucked up? <laughs> Fatty Arbuckle? Who was yeah, it? Fa Fatty Arbuckle just was always was, yeah, was, was 20 minutes, yeah, 30 hours late. 30 was, hours late, so now they got to bring you in. We got to get the Arbuckle rule. I want all these assholes here now at my worst 7 a.m. My worst one ever, I got called. I was went to a set at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and I didn't work, didn't utter a word until 1 in the morning. Oh, I've done that where I got called on a, I remember uh, Tropic Thunder, there was this huge uh, party scene. And it was just one of those things where I just learned that it's all communication where Ben Stiller is directing and Ben, and ben I think he kept saying, Rob, my character's name is Rob, mm -hmm. but there's also an actor named Rob. And he was like, Rob should be in there, right? You know. And the first AD went, oh, Bill's not, Bill's not working today. <laughs> so they would wake me up, oh, no. call me in, <laughs> fly me <laughs> to call me in. I would go in at 2 in the morning. This is out in wherever we were shooting, like Hawaii or something. I'd, they'd go in, put me in makeup, and I would just sit in my trailer. And then finally I'd get tired, you know, kind of like, what am I doing, you know? Yeah. I, I'm not in this scene. And I'd, so I'd go to set, and Ben would go, what the fuck are you doing here? <laughs> 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 and then two days later, hey, we need you to come in. What's going on? I'm like, what are you doing here? And he goes, no, Rob, Rob, the actor, Rob, not the fucking, you know? Hey, <laughs> 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 man, I showed up twice. Oh, it was terrible. You know what's funny? Waiting in those trailers, I actually understood my dog more. Yeah. Like, I was just thinking, why does this thing <laughs> fucking sleep all the time? And it's basically, it's if you have surly. nothing to do, it goes back to sur survival, where it's like, we're going to shut down your body and just store yeah. up this energy. So, like, the level of tired you get. But and How does uh, my dog know every episode of the Tyra Banks show? Because that seems to be the only thing on television. <laughs> Oh, or when you go to the trailers. I've never had the TV work. So oh, I was right, like, oh, they got a flat screen TV in here, and it never works. It's just some, like, whatever signal. You just hear the other actor next to you clearing their throat every yeah. couple of hours. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. And then the phone with their agent. <laughs> I, uh, I, I'm not going to do that. They want me so, to do this. I'm not going to do it. Well, let's uh, let's promote it a little bit here, because uh, um, as far as, like, it's on HBO. Okay, mm -hmm. the final episode is this Sunday. Yeah. There's eight of them, and if, if people want to go back and watch all of them, I imagine in 2018 HBO has a way to stream Yeah, I was thinking, on, yeah, HBO Go, You if you have that, you can go check it out. And right. I think uh, Amazon, Hulu, those places. Well, I'm old school in that I like to watch an episode – I like the the old way where you mm -hmm. watched it and then you had to wait a week for it to come out and then and then another one went and and like like um I don't, I don't know all the shows that I watch you try to guess what was going to happen and now like there's all these great shows they just dump it and, all on and you. people just sit down and it's like you it's like the greatest bottle of wine ever and you like <laughs> shotgun it you just <laughs> Wow, it was amazing. And then, like, what else can I have now? And it's just, and I also have a, I feel for like the amount of work that was put into this. Cause that's what happens with the fucking cartoon I'm doing, which just, I actually did a cartoon after because of those getting called at four in the afternoon, not working until when. I'm like, dude, fuck this live action shit. I'm going to do a cartoon where I just show up in a baseball hat and sweatpants. And I didn't realize that it was like 90 times slower. And then the thing comes out, and people will watch it all in one night. That's great. When's the next season coming out? It's just like, I, yeah. I, you can't. 
well, might as well just be a movie. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, put it in the theater. I don't know. But I, I like it that you do this, and then for eight weeks, people are talking about – there's like a level, the high-intensity level of excitement. Yeah, and you try to guess like, where it's going to go. go. I have no idea where this is going to go. Yeah. yeah, and that's – it's fun having people come up to me – you know, at my kid's school or whatever, going, "Hey, someone, this is what's gonna happen, right? Yeah. I mean, is someone you know, so gonna kill yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Are you gonna kill one this guy, guy?" Came up, and he was like, "Stephen Root, he's a figment of his imagination, right? Yeah. He's not real." Oh <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you might be right. You know, <laughs> I, I got you figured out, asshole. I'm like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> I used to watch Lost. I know where you're going with this. Yeah, the, it's all figments of uh, some mouse's imagination, right? <laughs> yeah, it's all a figment to get eight seasons or whatever the hell it is. Um, but anyway, you know something? I actually, uh, something I, I, I want to bring up before I forget is that, you know, uh, that you're from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh -huh. And I was telling you earlier that that is one of my favorite cities to perform stand-up in. They got the Brady Theater there, yeah. which evidently some ridiculous race riot happened. Really? I guess so. I mean, I walk in there as a white guy. I'm like, oh, this has a nice vibe. <laughs> <laughs> This feels like really great. This and then is, it, why is this so comfortable? Yeah, and it's um, oh. it's and then they got all this great food because all these all these people um, who had never been there when I told them uh, I'm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and everybody's like, "Oh Jesus Christ!" You know, yeah. what are you gonna fucking go ride a bull out there? Like <laughs> go cow tipping? Yeah, and they don't understand like how like. The the food there is incredible. Yeah, massive amounts of hipsters. It's the exact oh, yeah. opposite thing that you would uh, picture. But that old theater there. Yeah, I, I saw it... George Carlin there once. I remember that was the first comedy show I ever saw. Like, what year did you, What year did you see him? I don't remember. I was young. I remember my dad. It was a thing where I had to get snuck into the thing. But my dad. God, I don't remember. It had to be in the eighties sometime. I saw him in the eighties too. Yeah, and I remember seeing him and. Just my face hurting from laughing and just yeah. it and, and not knowing that he did like two hours or <laughs> I don't know yeah. what it was. It was just super long. But to me, I was like, oh, keep going, keep going, you know, and uh, and just leaving on this high and just going, wow, that was unreal. Did that have an effect that you you like at that, that point? Did you already know you wanted to get into comedy or? No, I mean, I, to me, that just seemed like a. I mean, I I was someone I didn't I and I still have you know I'm very anxious having to get up in front of people and so I, I uh, the idea of going up there alone and telling jokes and how quick he was but I loved watching stand up. My dad's a giant fan of stand stand up mm -hmm. and so and in the eighties and that you know every TV you know you had the A and E the even at the Improv oh, you had yeah. the MTV half hour comedy I watched hour all of those a hundred times I would watch those I saw those I mean I would run into like Jeff Garland and be like. Do you remember you used to do the I think with Adam West? Adam West I ordering a bagel, bagel and he gets hit with a you you yeah. you half hour comedy hour yeah. MTV. Yeah, and he went, "What? How did you know?" And, I, and then when I met Judd Apatow for the first time, I go, "You used to do a bit about a, uh, uh, you know, your nose, uh, you know, being stuffed up and how it switches, you know, uh, you know, you get congested in one nostril and goes in a, a nostril and." Yeah, no, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's usually that can freak people out. I remember I forget the name of the comedian, but he had this great bit. He was talking about. I ran into the guy. I don't even remember his name, but I it was one of my favorite bits that I saw from one of those evening at the Improvs, and he was talking about how he was the youngest kid in this big family mm -hmm. and how strict the parents were with the older kids. <laughs> And by the time it got down to him, it was, uh, you know, uh, it was basically the only rule was no heroin in the living room. <laughs> and then one of my favorite tags of all time, it was just like, Brian, you're not using one of the good spoons. <laughs> and that was just like, you know, for a clean joke and all that, I, I really loved it. I got to actually run into him and tell him. And I remember just talking to that guy and him just looking at me like, how the fuck does this kid? Oh my god! Rem Bob, remember Bob Nelson? That guy would. Do, there was a guy Bob Nelson would do all crazy. Yeah. And then the I saw him open for Rodney Dangerfield. Really? Right after Back to <laughs> Back to School came out, dude. That summer at Great That's, Woods, yeah, in uh, Mansfield, Massachusetts, I saw Rodney Dangerfield, and then a few weeks later, I saw Eddie Murphy on the Raw Whoa. tour. Whoa! And the Weather oh, Girls well, opened insane. up. Weather Girls opened up. They sing It's Raining Men. Yeah. And they were big girls. And I remember he came out and was doing all these jokes about, I got to check out the stage because the Weather Girls <laughs> can fuck up the stage. Back when you could fat shame people. And um, 
He had like the purple suit on and all of that Does stuff. He, and, did he always close with his dad eating Tinker Toys and the the food the 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 toy thing? Remember that? The, I don't remember what he closed. The, the, I mean, Eddie, the, Eddie, we we would eat our Tinker Toys, Eddie. That whole thing that he would do is because that was a thing seen raw. Which now you watch raw and you're like, geez, there's some stuff you couldn't do now in that show. Yeah, but. That uh, that but that's end not bit, fair to him. That's not, I know, I yeah, know, but it's, like it's just like ago. it was thirty years ago. But you go like, uh, yeah, at SNL, you would watch something. Oh, you guys got to watch Raw, and then they would come back and go, "Why did you find that funny? It was so offensive and everything." And go, "Wow, well, I, I don't know, man, you know." Uh, you, you, what about the thing at the end? You know, I would just try to concentrate on the thing I found. Oh no! Really when funny, I watch that know? thing, it, it it makes me sad that he stopped because yeah. he was twenty five years old. And uh, when he was talking about, uh, you know, the level of success he got to and thinking about getting married and seeing Johnny Carson getting divorced and all of that yeah. stuff and saying, you know, women get half, that's bullshit. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody goes, women get half and that woman goes, that's right. And he goes, no, nah, that's bullshit. And it was like he was going to that next level where it's like, oh, now this guy is going to, you know, start saying what he thinks about all this stuff. Because, you know, the, the delirious was amazing, yeah. but it was, uh, you know, Ralph Cramden having sex with, you know. Yeah, yeah, Gooly Goo and, and all Goo-goo that. Gooly Goo Goo and all that Goo-goo, stuff. Yeah. And then all of a sudden he was like, it was, <laughs> you've seen this guy finding his voice. And uh, and then, I mean, who knew that I would go see him and that, that was actually like the farewell was, tour. Yeah, well, I think when he did that, the thing at the end of Raw was a thing I saw, you know, as a, uh, when I was young and, and it went, wow, he's just, uh, by himself, he might as well be by himself in his room. You know what I mean? It was like he went into this other place. You know, it wasn't like j- jokes. You know yeah. what I mean? It was like no, he, he was went. Talking. He he's just talking, and he just went to this place, and it, and it's the thing. Like I'm never as funny. I, the funniest I'll ever be is in the lunchroom with my friends, and they were all funnier than me. You know right. what I mean? Oh, everybody <laughs> went to high school was funnier than I was. Way funnier than me, and I still I'll see those guys, and they'll just like they'll send me a text about. One of my friends hated Three Billboards, that movie, and his text made me laugh harder than anything <laughs> that I've read, any comedian I know. All I do is hang around with comedy people, and, I'll, and I'm like, what? You know, he works at a window store in Oklahoma someplace, but yeah. he's so funny. Or just how you they know? live their life. I got a buddy of mine, uh, Joe DeRosa, was opening for me, and, you know, it was after the show we did in Boston. I got all my Boston friends, you know, hanging out or whatever, and... Uh, one of my buddies offered to buy a round of drinks. We're all ordering drinks. And my buddy Joe ordered a white Russian. And my friend was just done with him. And he came up to me. He goes, dude, what's up with your boy? I go, what's the matter? He goes, he just ordered a white Russian. And I didn't really think about it. I was like, oh, you know, he drinks white Russians. He likes, you know, whatever that f- movie with the dude. He, he likes, big yeah, guy. he's a big Lebowski fan. I didn't think of anything about it. And then the end of the night, I'm walking back with Joe, and he's just like, I got, you know, like hanging out with friends. He goes, yeah, that's cool. He's like, dude, what are your friends? Was He was like really friendly, and he was like talking to me. Then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just stopped talking to me. And it was just like, and it was it was all based on the fact that he ordered a white Russian. And the, we were well into our 30s, like late 30s, and this guy still, to this day, and I remember a long time ago. I just don't ago, trust that guy. I don't, I don't know anybody like that. Well, I remember yeah. a long time ago, he, for some reason, was giving the responsibility to watch the house of this married couple. And, of course, so he immediately has this all over there. <laughs> and we're getting hammered. And, um, and he's taking care of the house. He went down into the basement. And there was some sort of uh, faucet nozzle or something you had to turn on or off. And, and, and the lady left a post-it note on it saying, you might have to uh, turn it a little harder. My husband said it's a little fussy. And my buddy just went up and just immediately turned it with no problem at all. And he just, he just mutters, this guy's a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and we're in his house. And he probably, he just said that to his wife, just being, you know, gentlemanly, you know, yeah. to a woman. And then this, my friend just totally <laughs> judged this guy that he was, he was not a man. Like his man, yeah. like, that's what I love about my friends back there. How easily you can lose your man card yeah. and you have no idea. And they won't even tell you why. They just stop talking to you. Oh, it's the worst. When my friends, they visited the, the set of Barry and, you know, I'm doing all these things or whatever and I have an assistant. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> it's over. She walked over. Here's your, here's your coffee. What, man, you can't get your own coffees now? What? What do you think? The, machine, the machine's right there, dude. 
just go over and get your own goddamn coffee, Bill. And I'm like, well, I'm focusing on, I don't give a shit. You go over, and get, why are you making her get your, and I'm like, no, no, you're right. You're right. I should be, the machine's right there. I don't know. You're, no, you're right. You know what I mean? I just feel like an <laughs> asshole. And then I'm like, why did I invite you here to, you know, uh, make me feel bad? And then, hey, man, did you try the dessert? I, you know, I'm trying not to eat anything bad because, you know, the guys in the military are like, oh, Fuck you, man. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> just it's... like, oh, you what, you're dieting now? And I'm like, I, I, yeah, they just keep you real. I, and, you know, I end up, <laughs> I just go back harder at them. I can't say Well, you anything. know, yeah, I'm really trying to work on my man tits like you have. I mean, that's the only way to keep them <laughs> off you. Dude, I had another friend, the exact same party. He was telling me, he was telling this story. He's going, where are you staying? I told him the hotel I was staying at, and he was a construction guy. He goes, oh, I worked on that. He goes, crazy story. We were, we were putting a flagpole or something up. And he goes, the, the fucking cable broke. This guy was underneath directing. The cable broke and just came slamming down on this guy. Oh, jeez. And I go, Jesus Christ. I go, did he die? And he goes, did he die? He was in fucking pieces. <laughs> and I go, well, what happened? He goes, oh, guys were puking. Some people jumped in their truck and drove away. And they go, oh, his dad was there. He had a heart attack. So we're all just sitting there like dead silence. And then he just out of nowhere, he goes, ah, kid was kind of a douche. <laughs> and then he goes, he goes, his dad was a good shit. And that actually broke the tension and everybody started laughing. And I just remember thinking like, you couldn't teach somebody no. in an acting class how to take this somebody to such a dark place. Yeah. And he sensed it. No, that's he a, sensed that a, a laugh needed to come and he knew exactly where yeah, to he, go. Yeah, he had intuition. My friend... Uh... I used to be a PA. I was a production assistant for a long time, and and I worked on this movie James Dean and an invented life. There, James Franco played James Dean, mm -hmm. and this guy Jason Altieri, who's now a big first AD now, but he was a PA. And again, what we're talking about, he had a he had a, a real like Rambo knife, mm -hmm. like he got it from the props truck, and he's just taking chunks out of this tree with it. And he's just hitting this tree with this giant knife. Okay. And we're all kind of sitting there while, and he's just t bullshitting with us. But he's like, "Look at this fucking thing! Wow, look at the, like, look! It's really, it's like an axe, you know." Tree standing there, <laughs> Tree's like, standing ow, like ow, 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 ow. <laughs> and this other guy, Bill Hardy, this big guy walking over, and he, he's another PA smoking. Say, "Hey guys," and Jason, he's weird. This kid, he's, he pretends like he's gonna stab him. He just goes, mm, "Hey, hey!" And he goes, "Hey, don't fuck it. That's not funny. Don't do that. You yeah. know, don't do that. That's not cool. Don't do that." Jason goes, mm. "So Bill walks away." The props guy comes over and goes, I have that same knife, but it's the exact same knife, but it's retractable. It's plastic. It's fake. You know? Oh, and God. he goes, get it to me. Get it to me. <laughs> so he takes it, and it is the best piece of acting I've ever seen. Just totally calm, pretending to, like, you know, cut at the tree, do everything, just waiting for Bill to come back. Bill walks back. Hey, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? And he does the, <laughs> does the thing yeah. again. Bill, yeah. And then he just rears back and stabs him in the chest. Oh, God. <laughs> and Bill goes, why? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. He just screamed. <laughs> His reaction was, why? <laughs> like, you just murdered me. <laughs> His whole and life I, flashed he just went. Him. He legitimately was like, my friend just murdered me. <laughs> and, we, <laughs> and we fell down laughing. We felt bad, and I've told that story to other people. And I go, that's horrible. That's not nice at all. And I go, I know, but if you were there, it was the funniest thing I think I'd ever seen. And because you it, literally got to see, what would your friend do? If what he would he died? do if he died? He would say, why? If he got murdered. But then Jason, to your point, the reason I thought of it was that he was such a good actor. He was just like you couldn't have taught like anybody else to think you would have got it, and they would want to run over to him and go, hey, look in the knife. And then you know what I mean? That's but what I would. Had, I would have taken the knife and walked up to him and done it. But you he know, had the somebody, patience. He had the patience to keep, like, no, no, I have to keep this, this, this lie up where he was pretending to do that. And we sat there waiting for him for like fifteen minutes, and then he kind of would meander back, like, no, we can't call him over, we can't do this. You oh, know? I wouldn't be able to keep a straight <laughs> face. I'm the worst. <laughs> hey, when you watch somebody do something like that, as an actor, do you get something out of that watching yeah. a guy like that? Yeah, yeah, you kind of go, oh wow, that patience or. So much of it, too, is just kind of impersonating people or, you know, or doing nothing. That was the thing he did that was good, was he didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? He just was doing what he did before, and he kind of instinctively knew, like, well, that's how the, that's the best way to do this. That's the best you way know? to set the trap is to make it look like nothing. Uh, nothing happened. 
instead of I would have gone over there or been, hey, Bill, come back or whatever. Are those some of your your favorite actors? Are you a character actor guy as far as like the guys that you watch? Because your acting on on this series is is phenomenal. I kept I kept calling uh, uh, my wife in, going, "Look, this is like the best." I'm telling you, it's like the best work I've seen, and I love all the stuff that you've done. But like this, to actually, I love it when they give a funny guy a chance to show that, hey, I can do these other things too. Oh, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. So I I was just curious now that I, I see that you have that. In the toolbox, like who are some of your favorite actors? Um, well, I mean, it's not. I mean, the I had a tape that this is kind of everybody, but uh, I had a VHS tape that had Taxi Driver and Raging Bull on it, and I mm-hmm. would just watch those a bunch and just watch Robert De Niro on those movies. He just does. It's kind of what we're talking about. He doesn't do much, but he did enough. You know, it yeah. was like he this the way my it was behavior. But to, to be honest, like I like a lot. You know. Uh, um, I like a lot of actors, but I, I was always more excited by the story. I would watch a movie for a story, but it, to me, it's just more, it's more about observing behavior of people. You know, you watch like a documentary or I would watch a guy like Jason Altieri do that mm-hmm. thing or whatever, but it was uh, the actors who could modulate behavior instead of pushing and making it like a performance, you know? Right. There's a movie called Kess. It's this British movie from the late 60s. And then there's this non-actor, this kid in it, who's phenomenal. And it just is because it's all just very genuine. Right. You know what I mean? Okay, it's time for a little bit of advertising. Oh, look who's back. It's old Zip. Ray! Screwed up. Talk about the challenges of finding great talent and how the way you went about it just did not work or was inefficient. You know, I tried to dig down deep into myself to try to be a good comedian and it turned out all I had was a bunch of shit and dick jokes down there. And it was really tough. And then I used Zip Recruiter and all of a sudden, you know, I started talking about pussy too. And my my comedy went to... I, I, I don't fucking hire people. But I know this app... This this Is this an app? This product this service let's go with that i know it works zip recruiter knew there was a smarter way so they built a platform that finds the right job candidates for you these invitations have revolutionized how you find your next hire in fact 80 percent of employees who post a job on zip recruiter get a quality candidate through the site in just one day and zip It uh, doesn't stop there. They even spotlight the strongest applications you receive so you never miss a great match. The right candidates are out there. Zip. Recruiter. Is how you find them. Businesses of all sizes trust Zip Recruiter for their hiring needs. Right now, my listeners can try Zip Recruiter. That's right. They can use it for free. You can try it for free. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. One more time. Hi, Zip. Burr. The smartest way to hire. Look who's here. Boo do 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 me undies. Me undies. I'm sitting in my fucking car. Do 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 me undies. Me undies. I'm driving out to a bar. I'm going to get hammered at the bar. Take a piss in my soft underwear. My balls will feel great and undies will dry it up. You don't need no more adult diapers. Uh, Me undies are made with a sustainably sourced material from beechwood trees. They're made out of trees, man. Their naturally soft fiber makes a fabric that won't sag down or ride up. Trust me, once you got a pair on, you'll get it. And if you're already part of the Me undies family, tell your friends about it through their referral program. It's like Amway, but with fucking panties. They get a discount and you'll get a store credit. It's a win-win. MeUndies is sure you'll love their first pair. They're so sure you'll love their first pair that if you're not happy, they'll do whatever they can to get you the right pair. And if they can't, keep them and they'll refund you. So it's really risk-free. Free to try the best underwear ever. Still not sure? Well, MeUndies has a deal for my listeners. First-time purchasers get 20% off their first pair of MeUndies and free shipping. Get your ass over to MeUndies.com and treat yourself to get 20% off your first pair and free shipping and 100% satisfaction guarantee. Go to MeUndies.com slash Burr. That's MeUndies.com slash Burr. It's unbelievable how hot your car gets the second you shut it off and keep the windows and doors shut. Oh, look who's here. Honey! 
When you shop online, do you suddenly turn into a tab hoarder, loading dozens and dozens of new tabs on your browser in search of a promo code? Just one that works. Afraid to close any of them in fear of missing out on a deal? Before you crash your browser yet again, try Honey! Honey! It's the free browser add-on that's over nine, that over 9 million people are using every day to save money while they shop online. In two clicks, add Honey to any browser for free. Then shop like you normally do. Honey! Scans and tests millions of coupons in the background. And check out Honey! Automatically applies the best coupon. Honey never means honey. It never does. Time Magazine calls Honey basically ev- basically free money. Over 9 million people have used, oh, Honey, every day. And together, they've saved millions of dollars. There's no reason not to add Honey to your browser today. I'm running out of ways to say it. It's free. Just takes two clicks to install and will save you tons of money. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash bird. That's two words. Join Honey. Um, dot com slash burr to start saving with honey today. That's joinhoney.com slash burr. All right, there's people next door working on the house. They think I'm fucking crazy. All right, Helix, everybody. Helix, there's nobody on the planet like you, so why would you buy a fucking mattress built for everyone else? Next, please mention all the talking points below. Well, I'm gonna. You wrote it, I'm gonna read it. Uh, working with the world's leading sleep experts, Helix Sleep developed a mattress that customized... It's customized to your specific height, weight, and sleep preferences so you can get the best goddamn sleep of your life at an unbelievable price. Here's how it works. Go to helixsleep.com. Fill out their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll design your custom mattress. They can even customize each side for you and your partner. In 2018, Helix Sleep has taken customized sleep to the next level with the Helix Pillow. The all-new pillows are fully adjustable so you can achieve perfect comfort regardless of sleep position or body type. Do you want to kill your wife? They got a pillow for that too. Helix Sleep has the... uh, That's just a joke. Helix Sleep does not condone any fucking violence towards you. Helix Sleep has thousands of five-star reviews. Plus, you get 100 nights to try them out. Tell them which hand you jerk off with. They'll have a little elbow indentation on that side of the mattress. Go to helixsleep.com slash burr right now and you'll get up to $125 towards your new fucking mattress. That's helixsleep.com slash burr for up to $125 off your mattress. Helixsleep.com slash burr. H-E-L-I-X. Sleep. Actors, when, when they'll... Well, I'm playing a new guy, so the guy can't walk like me. And they'll yeah. come up with like a walk. Yeah. Who, I don't know those DeRozan to bring him up again. He, told, he was talking about John Travolta one time. He saw him and John Travolta was like, well, Vinny Barbarino walked like this. Vincent uh-huh. Vega walked like this. Uh-huh. And it's just like, dude, he does the walks. Yeah. And I was thinking of the little acting that I've done. It's like every character I've done walks <laughs> like me. <laughs> they always have to rewrite it. He's he's a serial killer from Boston. Boston. He's a, yeah. He's, he's a, a Hawaiian, Hawaiian guy, guy from, from Boston. Boston. Yeah. yeah. He's I did a cowboy a, from Boston. Yeah, yeah. He, I did one where they, they couldn't justify why I wasn't from the Midwest, so they said he went to college in Boston and he picked up the accent. But so for some reason, he came back here and he didn't go he's, back to the accent that he used for 18 uh, he years. He was raised by some assholes from Boston, <laughs> <laughs> but in the Midwest. He watches a lot of reality TV, and there's always the loud Boston guy. So um, He likes watching interviews with uh, Mark Wahlberg and, uh, yeah. No, but he know. he doesn't have he doesn't have uh, an, an accent in Mark Wong now. Yeah, no, like I, right, I'm always yeah. amazed at how. Yeah. Uh, you forget that he's he can he can knock that out somehow. Yeah. yeah, and I've watched some like I started out with uh, Patrice O'Neill and Dane Cook, and I saw like an old Dane Cook stand-up thing in the last couple of years. I saw it, and in like the mid '90s, he had a really big-time Boston accent. Oh, really? And now he doesn't. Oh, wow. Like I don't know how. I, I think you're either one of those people like you just sort of like if you get somewhere new, you just sort of it just floats away yeah. or it's just stuck in you i think i'm i'm sort of a, i mean i don't have like or a you severe work one. on it or yeah people work that's on it what to it get is. rid of it people do work on it to get rid of it then it's weird we have bill hater here from it's barry like i am going to pronunciate hi i'm from boston massachusetts no i think but yeah it's a weird <laughs> thing where but i i don't know yeah it's like i saw this cooking show recently and this guy he was doing something you know this fucking guy's travel and he goes boston 
you come here for a beer and a beating. And I just, I was looking at my wife, I go, oh, you go to look at the foliage. <laughs> it's just like, how many times did you watch Goodwill Hunting before you went there to steam your asparagus that you felt you had to go that hard? You know, it's like, there's also MIT, there's Harvard, hate. Tasty pudding or hasty pudding. There's a lot of like, you know, you could go get some oysters. Oysters. <laughs> beer and a beating. It's like, all right. I lived there for 27 years. I never took a beating. I walked away from fights and I was fine with it. Hey, you're tougher than me. Your dad was angrier than my dad. You win. I'm out of here. Steam your asparagus. <laughs> yeah, with your little poached egg on top of it. I fucking hate the Food Network now. They used to just have people there cooking, and yeah. they teach you how to cook, and then it became you had to have a personality. And yeah. It, you know, I, yeah. I, 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 and I respect his cooking, but I blame that fucking Emerald Lugasi. He's oh, the yeah. guy. I'm going to fucking put some sugar, bam. Yeah, right. And he had a studio <laughs> audience and a band. I used to be the assistant editor on a lot of those shows on like Iron Chef America. I was the, the assistant editor. I don't get that, that fucking show. show. I Cooking that, is supposed to be a relaxing, I loving know. thing that you do, and they take it's, it's like sudden death. You got to make waffles. <laughs> we got stones and a <laughs> and carpet. How the fuck am I going to do this? And How the fuck am I gonna, Mario, let's see what you got. And like, yeah. oh. We used to have a thing of uh, Bobby Flay uh, uh, like electrocuting himself. He accidentally electrocuted himself. It was really funny. Oh, he did? Yeah, they cut it from the thing, but he grabbed a ladle and something happened, and he just went <laughs> and just dropped out of frame. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but yeah, we had a, just a thing of him. Did his, his heart stop? Or? I don't know, but he dropped and then kind of came up in a daze, and we were... Uh, that he always thing, seemed yeah. like he had indigestion to me because yeah. he would always be like, okay, today we're going to make it. It's just like, dude, go off camera and burp because I, I liked him. I like all of those guys. They all taught me what little I know, but like, I, I, I used to watch Molto Mario uh -huh. all the time, which to me was the yeah. perfect one. It's like he went over his house and uh, he cooked for you. Yeah, it was like being his friend. Yeah, and then all of a sudden it just became like that fucking guy yelling on Iron Chef. Yeah. Or the diners driving and dives guy. Yeah. Which is hilarious because, like, he just looks so burnt out on that show. Oh, yeah. What's his name? Uh, guy. Uh, guy Fieri. Fieri. He yeah. just says what you're doing. Like, you can make, like, a <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Okay. So you, uh, you're putting some peanut butter in the bread. And, okay. And you get some jam in there that's going to uh, take a little edge off the peanut butter. <laughs> and he makes so much money. God, God that bless guy him. Made, that guy makes so much money. Oh, my God. He needs to get the hard top because he's yeah. going to die of skin cancer. The guy looks like a fucking lobster. This is coming from a redhead. I'm telling you. He's got to get some sunblock. Um, so what What can we talk about about the show? Everybody, because I mean, this is a podcast. It's not like people are dipping in here. Yeah. People know that the show uh, is on. So they uh, HBO, is there HBO streaming dot net yeah. org? Yeah, thing? I mean, you go to like, uh, well, no. I mean, Amazon or Hulu or uh, 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 HBO Go is the thing. A lot HBO of Go. Have. That's HBO what it Go. is. Yeah, it's great. What That's would be most, best for you? Where should they watch it? I Whatever they want. I don't oh, care. Okay, I wasn't I sure. I don't care. But, I remember I mean, when Louie had his show on FX, it would be like, you know, can you please watch it so I get credit for people like watching the advertising because oh, everybody I would see. then, I don't they would record that. it and then fast forward it. I don't know. I know. Yeah. They, I mean, to me, it's just, yeah, just watch, I hope you watch the show. HBO has been amazing to work with. The fact that we could go in and pitch this show to them and we're pitching a half hour comedy and the two movies I mentioned are Taxi Driver and Unforgiven. <laughs> Yeah. You know, and that's yeah. Like, now, how do you know? they how do they react to like you coming in and think okay, it's Bill Hader, this is going to be funny exactly. And they then you come in, gonna, yeah, they come in with this, and they go. And to their credit, they were really excited about it. It actually made them more excited. Than, did, you, did how many places did you did you pitch this show? Well, it was just HBO because oh, I had okay. a deal with them, and so I had this kind of development deal with them, and and i was shooting train wreck actually and the whole time i was on train wreck going what if, you know what am i going to do i have this deal now with hbo but i got to write a show and so i met with alec berg and then we came up with this and then i i remember pitching it to them and thinking well if they don't like it they don't like it but well, this is what i would rather want to do with if i could do anything right. it would be this and um they, the 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 fact that it they were the ones going oh uh, you know I said uh, you know the violence has to be very real it's not funny it has the, viol to be. the violence is not funny at all when he fights people I like it to feel real I just don't I don't want it to be cool you know and uh, they or, 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 or absurd yeah like weekend at Bernie's jokes you know what I mean right. like 
which you could easily do in this. You know, there's a lot of times where you, you know, there's a scene in episode three where I, you know, have to strangle a guy and there's, there's in his backyard, there's all these uh, child, you know, kid toys and stuff. And I remember Alec Berg and I were shooting that scene and, and I said, you know, any other place they would be like, hey, can we make it funny? Can you kill him with the kid's jump rope or you know, can't we get some jokes in there? Or, you know what I mean? And it's like, no, it's not. I feel like the murder is going to be too depressing. Yeah. So it's like, it should it? be. No, no, no. But he should kill him. He should still kill him, but just funny, you know? And you're like, no, but uh, <laughs> we can't do that. <laughs> I've said this before in the podcast. You know, that's why I could never really watch. I, I watched Dexter because I liked the performances, but I couldn't fully commit to it because I could just hear the industry note. Oh, Whereas, really? like, they went, he's a serial killer. And it's just like, well, how can we root for that? And it's just like, <laughs> all right, he just kills the bad people. He's yeah. the serial killer with a good heart. And then I just was, I just never was able. Well, that's the hard thing. That's been the nice thing with, with Barry, at least, is HBO, you know, when we would turn in the drafts, you know, when we get to later in the season, especially, it starts to get, uh, Barry definitely is not just killing the good people you know or yeah. ba- you know bad you know b- bad people he's killing oh, I gotta, oh, I you know go, i gotta go home and i gotta see you this. know it, it gets terrible and where he 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 ends up going is is uh pretty rough but it was it, that was always just being honest to that guy you know what i mean and that that's the thing that hbo has been great about is that we'll say hey is this too much and they go well what else is you gonna do you know they see it from the yeah. character standpoint they're like well What's his choice? Well, the, the, you know? I saw the two episodes, and I, I uh, actually felt for the guy as far as like how he became. That's another thing. Like he just, he's just not like oh, just okay. He just was born a psycho. It's like no, yeah. this guy went to Afghanistan. I can say yeah. this about Afghanistan. Did what he did over there, and then got into this line of work where he's a hitman. Yeah, and he basically wants to get out of it and uh and and just henry winkler's characters with like the acting class i mean i took a bunch of acting classes i had a lot of oh you did oh i had a (laughs) i had had some great acting teachers and i had but there but there was was some you know when they became like the guru and um i I can't remember this woman's name and i only audited her class (laughs) I audited two class. I mean, one one class I audited. It turned out it was Scientology. Oh, really? Oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> I went in there. <laughs> this actor who was in Scientology goes, "Oh, you need an acting class," and she sent me there. And it was acting class, but it was also like Scientology. So, which I, I felt like she should have said. Right, that should have been. It's acting, but there's a little extra yeah. thing. So I go there. Audited. I go there, and I remember uh, we were sitting there. And the and the guy teaching the class goes, uh, does anybody have uh, any uh, news they want to uh, you know share with the class? And someone would raise their hand and be like, oh, I uh, you know I I just book a, a three episode arc on uh, you know who gives a fuck on ABC, <laughs> and then the whole cro- the whole audience like ridiculously loud would go, wow, yeah. like this positive. And like, but it was crazy Very hot. Faultish, kind and of thing. I, I was sitting there like, what the fuck, right? So like, five people did that, and then they go, hey, we have, we have, we have two people auditing the class. Uh, this guy, he's he's just fresh here from New York. He's he's an actor. He's trying to get some parts. Blah 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 blah. Please welcome Bill Burr. And they they clapped like I won a <laughs> lifetime achievement award. I remember my face turned red. I was embarrassed. So, you know, and then I saw the scenes and the actors were good and everything. And then during the break, like, I remember the teacher was looking at me and goes, was, uh, was that, was that too much? Was, was, was that too much? <laughs> Did I push? Was that, was I pushing? I'm sorry. Yeah. And I, so then I went in and I sat down with them and they were just, and they just kept saying everything was their own. We have our own parking. We have our own security. <laughs> we have our own this. And I swear to God, I said, Jesus Christ, I feel like I'm joining a cult. Like I was trying to make a joke. And he kind of looked at me and his eyes were like going from my right eye to my left eye. And I was just like, what the fuck is going on? So I got out of there. And then I went down to this, this com- I swear to God, this is true. I went down to the comedy club and I mentioned, I said, yeah, I took this acting class. The actors were really good, but it was, it was just, just this fucking weird vibe. And then I told him like the name of the acting class. This guy goes, "Dude, that's fucking Scientology." <laughs> and uh, I don't know. I kind of felt like you know, the next time I saw that person, I had that vibe like like they put something in my drink. Right. Like, like you should have said, "I don't listen." Because here's the thing: like I don't judge. Like I hate when people act like, 
oh my God, those people are out of their fucking minds. It's right. like my religion is out of their fucking minds. Yeah. It's just they got enough people right. where they can act cool now and they don't right. care if you leave. Like yeah. Scientology needs people. Yeah. So they got to, you know, they got to lock you in a room or whatever it is. Yeah, but you need to right? say this is where you're going. <laughs> you need to say, like, by the way, you're going yeah. to a church. <laughs> I like how they have their own network now. To combat, because oh, yeah. that one woman did like the sh- uh, uh, those... Lena or yeah. Remini or whatever. Yeah, she thing. did all those episodes about how, how like crazy that was. But I always feel like there's another actor that could do the one about the Catholic Church. Yeah, they could about do them, anything. Yeah, banging kids. <laughs> and they made it seem like it was okay. And that was the thing. And you bought into it. Um, <laughs> we're getting off track here. No, man, it's great. Um, well, I, what I'm trying to do is I just don't want to fucking sit here and ask you about SNL and all of that shit that no. I know you've a- answered a zillion, oh, a zillion no, times. Right. No, I'm, I'm loving this. No, that's every uh, thing I go to is like, uh, so where's Stefan from or whatever, you know? So how did you come um, up with that? And what, how did you come up with? So um, tell I will us. tell you, my my favorite thing I ever saw you do was laughing uncontrollably, while uh, uh, it was a lock the locker room thing. Oh, it, Forte yeah, started Will dancing. Forte, yeah, oh my Paul God. Verzi told me about that. You literally have the towel. I have a towel wrapped around my face. Over your and face. Because fa- you know why? Because Forte did this dance, and he did it at the table read on Wednesday, and I just said, I can't. There's no way I'm going to be able to make it through that. That's too funny. Because right. he's a coach trying to get us all riled up to go back into the second half yeah. of the game. And to get us riled up, he does this Herb Albert, this dance this Herb Albert yeah. song. <laughs> <He's> like, <laughs> <laughs> and he does this dance, and then – and. Uh, and then, so, yeah, then I, I go, I, so before we went on air, I go, hey, Will, can you just do it for me a couple of times, just in my dressing room, can you just do it so I can, like, laugh and get it out? That's great, you're you know? such a pro. Can I just get it out? So he did it, but then on air, he added a move. Of course he did. Just to fuck with me. <laughs> he added this thing where he went like that, <laughs> like he couldn't hear me, and uh, and I lost it. I just completely lost it. And I started going, and then I remember Sudeikis was next to me, and went, oh, no, because I started going... <laughs> And then Keenan Thompson started going because we just it was Peyton like, Manning pretty Peyton much. Peyton Manning kept, lost it. Peyton. Manning I thought he could, kept a straight face. Oh he no, he he kind of he starts to put a towel around his face. He oh, starts, he did. He gets because I just but I completely lost it because for it also was just it was such a forte thing. Forte just he's not like um, on you know he's one of those guys very hey man just very cool chill guy and then he would do these ideas or something would happen to him and you go where is that. Yeah, from, he's incredible. You know, he would make me laugh. That he, whole period, all of those, all, like you were, you were, and you're one of those guys. Like that was oh, like, thank you. that was like, murderer's row. He 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 had a he pitched. He goes, oh, I'm uh, Bill. I'm going out with a movie, and I go, oh, it's the movie you're doing. He goes, I want to do a movie about uh, two brothers who who switch bodies. And I go, yeah. And he goes, here's the thing, they're identical twins. <laughs> <laughs> so it doesn't matter. <laughs> and I go, okay. And he goes, I go, how do people know that they switch bodies? He goes, well, that's the joke because everyone acts like, well, you're acting differently. That's not like you, but they're just acting. They're these two and he boring could somehow, guys. That guy's so talented. He, he would somehow sustain that for, he, for he 90 could minutes. He figure that out. And I was like, he told me that, and I laughed. For, I just went, where the hell did you come up with that? And you go, no, I'm going to write this movie about these two guys. So, yeah, he's just a genius. And a great guy too, but yeah, and that, I felt very lucky when I was there with all those people, Kristen and and uh, Andy and Fred Armisen and all those guys. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah, and you guys have all gone on to do stuff. So right now, are you? Are you, uh, are you when do you start back up with the next season? Or do you get we're the writing breather? it right now. We're writing season two right now. Oh God, did you get any of a? Did, how much of a break did you get? We between? got a bit of a break. Yeah, I mean, we finished all this in August. So Barry, oh, okay. Barry was done in August. So oh, okay. Then it starts airing, and then you know we open up a writers room, and then you know HBO uh, told us you know yeah you guys can you know, we do more. And is it it's going to be another eight? Mm-hmm. As of right now, who knows? We might change that, but as of right now, it's eight. I kind of like that. People, I like being able to craft eight episodes and kind of make it a very you know kind of a tight season you know and with a good yeah, story it's like a to great, it like back in the day when there was a great album a lot of times yeah. it was eight songs yeah but then when the 10 song <laughs> came out it's like all right here's the fucking ballad 
You're just trying to fill it. I get it. I get it. But it's the same thing with TV in a way where you go, oh, well, now we're going to watch an episode that's all about, you know, the gardener or something. And you go, I don't care about this. You know, I want to know what's going that. on with that. I don't want to, I want to know what else is. I know. Going I'm too on. jaded that I don't consider that groundbreaking. I'm just uh-huh. like, oh, yeah, you guys wanted an episode off. <laughs> I, I think the, the series regulars are bitching about their contract. Yeah, exactly. It's that guy, but we got to keep the train moving. All let's right, uh, so let's do something about uh, that guy. That guy, yeah. <laughs> Guess what? You're starting in the show this Guess week. Guess what, asshole? <laughs> yeah, you're carrying the show. And if it goes down, you never play a gardener in this town again, you piece of shit. Um, well, anyways, uh, thank you so much for uh, for coming on. Oh, um, man, this and, was and, odd. I feel like I, this, oh, my head hurts. I'm laughing so much. Good. But no, it was great. That's all my interviews want to be. Oh, good. I don't want anybody to learn anything <laughs> about you. I just want to give you a break from the same fucking 20 <laughs> questions. But I'm so happy for you, man. That thank you, you buddy. That, you, that means a lot. You've that you already like done it. so much brilliant work, and the fact that, you know, HBO. Shout out to them for being so cool to let a, a comedic actor. What I don't know how to define what 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 it is, a sketch. I don't know how. What, I just know comedian. What 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 do you? I don't know. Do label I, just, I don't know. Like sketch actor. Okay, yeah, the fact that you come yeah. out of SNL and they let you do something like that. Is yeah, and to awesome. write it and direct. I never directed before, and they let me direct stuff. And I mean, uh, you know, I d- directed the first three episodes and to write and all that. And so yeah, just to be able to have so much faith and. I mean, look, Eddie, Eddie, going back to Eddie Murphy, 48 hours. That yeah. is, is the, the acting that he does in that, he's so goddamn funny, but when it has to be real, he's, he's incredible. Great. And then what was, the, what was the one he got nominated for the... Uh, for the Dream Girls. Dream was, Girls, yeah. yeah. I, for the life of me, I don't understand why he doesn't yeah. get more stuff no, like he, that. No, he... I will say that, not to be, but that 48 hours scene when he goes into the redneck bar and he, you know, the cowboy, is one of the few scenes in movie history... Where you're like, uh, that's a movie star has just been born. Yeah. Where what with one scene, it's very rare where you can go. You know, like John Wayne in Stagecoach, they always say they push in on him. His first shot in Stagecoach, and everybody went, "Wow, yeah, who who's that, that guy? guy?" You know. Yeah. But Eddie Murphy in that scene, I just remember. I remember I didn't see, it, but my my dad seen that movie and coming back and going, "There's this guy in the movie. He's a the new guy in SNL. It, it is like one of the funniest things. He's phenomenal. You got to see. You know. Yeah." You and, know what else uh, about that amazing. movie is? I, 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 that is the best gun sounds. Oh, yeah. Walter Hill's movies always have like the, this canon. Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Unbelievable. And yeah. you know something? I actually uh, got to do an acting gig where I, I played. Uh, um, oh, fuck. I'm so bad with the name. Jason. Uh, he played Mike on Breaking Bad. Oh, I know uh, you're talking about. Yeah. Jason. Uh, yeah, he's great. And I'm I, got, I, got to talk, I got to talk to him. About being on forty eight hours. Wow. Uh, he's like, God damn it, Jack, don't choke do it. Don't choke do it. He goes, he gives him the gun. And then he also got thrown over the, the buffet table um in uh in Beverly Hills Cop. Scott, and he has one of my favorite lines in airplane. Oh, he was in airplane? Yeah, he goes, The guy just went from five hundred thousand feet to twenty thousand feet. What an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> he's the guy in the radar watching like yeah, this oh, guy. I gotta uh, see that again. Yeah, yeah. He, he just they cut away to him. He's like, I oh, he just went from it's like yeah, twenty five thousand feet to seven thousand feet. What an asshole! <laughs> I remember that line. Yeah, I just yeah. didn't remember that it was him. it was him. Yeah, he's also uh-huh. the guy. They go, how are we doing? And he opens up a it's a like a turkey, and then he's like, oh, we're almost done. We're almost finished here, sir. And it's like so just dumb. But <laughs> oh, he's gr- but he's great. I mean, that's one of the best. Yeah, that's the best movies. But yeah, no, the gunfight, the gun sounds in Forty Eight Hours. All those Walter Hill movies, he always had like a really cool sound design in his movies. He's great. Yeah, the the whole thing. I actually one time I, uh, this is like the epilogue of the podcast. At this point, I was on a subway, and the actor that played Luther, uh-huh. was, you know, the guy from Warriors, he was yeah. sitting like right across from me. He had, you know, he looked great. I mean, it's like maybe twenty years ago I saw him. Wow. And I, one of my just the way he delivered that line uh, when he uh, when. Uh, Nick Nolte's beating him up with the door and he goes you know says something like well I think you're lying and, and the line is yeah well who gives a fuck what you think and he doesn't yell to the word fuck mm-hmm. he just goes yeah well who gives a fuck what you think like <laughs> yeah, why would you yeah. yell at fuck <laughs> who gives a fuck what you think yeah, who gives yeah. a fuck what you think yeah, yeah. the way he did that that was like a rhythms. catchphrase in my yeah. family. Yeah, who gives a fuck what you? Yeah, he has such weird rhythms. That guy, all the warriors too. I mean, like he's such a yeah. str- like he has such cool way of speaking. You just you're like, yeah, 
Well, Amazing. you can learn a lot from that guy. People are going to learn a lot from you uh, oh, watching thanks, this ep- uh, this this Sunday's episode or go on HBO Go to check it out. Barry starring Bill Hader. Thank you, buddy. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. Thank you, buddy.